Hello, welcome to a set of video notes talking about our Studio Magic units. So the first section of Studio Magic is going to be on a subsection called Drummer. And so uh, you'll see as we go through the story that uh, it's called that because we're going to be following a drummer, a street busker who plays the drums as we help him uh, develop uh, a band, basically get more people in order to be, have a successful career as a musician. Uh, but then we're also going to learn about sound waves. We're going to learn about how uh, sound functions and learn about some of the properties of sound and then how we can uh, measure sound in terms of volume or things like frequency. So it's going to be a relatively uh, nice short unit that's going to be a mix of uh, kind of physics and some biology as well, because we'll also learn about how your ears work as we get into the next set of units. Okay, so this first part, drummer, um, activity one, is, uh, taking part on the streets, and that's actually where our story is going to be starting off. So today we're going to be looking at uh, discovering what sound actually is, uh, how sound actually travels through objects uh, in order to, you know, pass through the room or pass through, you know, a solid material or a liquid material. Also learn about why it cannot pass through space, right? And then we're going to find out what you know makes sound louder or softer and gives sound some of its properties. So in terms of our story, uh, we're going to be following this character. Uh, and so he's basically uh, a street busker. You know, he's a, a guy maybe in his late teens, early 20s. Uh, he's broke, right? He doesn't have enough money. His parents kind of kicked him out and want him to start making something with his life, right? And so kids in the past have said that he looks like Ed Sheeran for some reason. I, I guess he kind of does look like Ed Sheeran. Uh, so I've decided that his name is Zane. So his character's name is Zane, but we're going to call him Zane Sheeran for our units today. Uh, so Zane Sheeran here is the, the character we're going to be following through this unit. And so Zane, uh, basically, uh, all he's got left now is his talent for drumming and some drumsticks and some probably some empty buckets that he can be drumming on. So now he is going to be a busker, right? He's going to be those people who perform on the streets in order to hopefully get someone to donate money to them, right? So maybe seeing them walking around uh, London or some other major cities, there are areas of, of all cities around the world which are very popular for busking, right? For like tourists to kind of be entertained and then they donate some money to the person who's entertaining them, okay? Okay, so uh, hopefully he's wondering whether or not he can, he can make enough money to survive doing this. And you actually can. You can make a good amount of money busking on the street, but you've got to be really talented in um, bringing some, some big crowds throughout the entire time that you're working. So it is a, a tough life, but it is a way to, to kind of live and, and put your, you know, have a home and have food and stuff like that. Okay, so he's out on the street. He's got his drumsticks. He's got his buckets, right? Uh, but the streets are pretty noisy, right? You guys have uh, probably think that uh, cities are pretty quiet right now because of lockdowns and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, they are pretty noisy places. You've got car horns and construction and people walking up and down the streets, all the noise on the pavement, cars going by and stuff like that. And so if he's going to try to make money, he needs to get people to notice him. He needs to make a louder sound, right? He needs a bigger sound. He needs some help, right? Finding actual drums, proper equipment that can make big sound waves so that people notice him. And so that's where we're going to come in, right? So he needs an agent. He needs someone who's going to help him become successful. That's kind of what agents do in the music industry. And so all of us are going to collectively act as his agent. He's going to call us Agent Z. Not exactly sure why we're called Agent Z, but that's what we are. He's decided we're Agent Z, right? And so uh, we're going to help him through this process uh, over the course of some parts of this unit to help him build a band and become a more successful musician. And of course, being you know, uh, being agents, you, you can get a percent, right? The agents get like 10%, 15% of, of the profits. So I guess if this was the real world, you'd be doing this out of the goodness of your heart, but also you'd be making a small amount of money if it's successful, right? You're investing in him and hopefully that investment comes back. So first thing we need to do though is get him some proper equipment. He needs some proper drums. And it just so happens uh, that we have to figure out uh, a way to get these drums. They have to be loud and of course they would have to be for free because he doesn't have any money, right? They have to be really, really cheap or for free. And so in our story, it just so happens that there is a local musician shop nearby, right? It's Drew's Drums. It's got a whole bunch of different equipment, including drumming equipment. And they're doing a little bit of a competition about sound waves and about drums, right? And so they've got these series of questions that if you can answer them scientifically, if you can be very accurate in answering these questions, you can get a free set of some drumming equipment, right? So we got to answer this concept of what starts sounds, what makes some sounds louder and others softer, 
uh, how does sound travel basically and where and then uh, through what type of material and why is it that sound can travel through that material. And then when the sound hits a surface, right, when a sound wave hits a surface, uh, what happens to that sound wave, okay? So uh, we're gonna do some investigations to learn about uh, the properties of sounds. Now, uh, prior to this, or actually from this point on, uh, we would have actually, uh, in class, we would have did some activities, right? We all went around the room. There would have been these little stations where you can interact with all these materials uh, to kind of learn about the properties of sound. So uh, unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to do all of that, right? Um, because of the circumstances and the fact we're doing, you're doing this online. So we do have some videos. Uh, and there's some questions that go along with those videos uh, in your notes packet. And so uh, when the video is playing, uh, you can you know, pause the video if you need to uh, in order to like take some time to write some stuff down. But you just kind of want to follow along uh, with the video that we watch, the different sections of the video, uh, and go through the different sections in your notes and kind of fill out those questions um, as you do that. Okay, so there are going to be this properties of sound video and basically you need to be answering all those questions on page one that go with the different parts of the video. Okay, so uh, here's the video, all right? So you can, um, uh, or I'll pause it real quick. So you can kind of go along and answer these questions, sorry. Uh, so I'll play the video and so then uh, watch this and answer questions as we go through it. Okay. <laughs> Okay, next one. It's our tuning fork. If we hit the tuning fork, it vibrates and makes sound. Okay, so let's see it in slow motion. See it vibrating as it moves. Okay, again, pause it if you need more time. Here's the next one. ...of getting children to create sound waves in the classroom using just a balloon and a hexagonal nut. All you're going to do is get the nut to go inside the balloon and then inflate the balloon. Tie off the balloon. We know the nut's inside there. All you have to do is spin the balloon to create a sound. The great thing about this as a demonstration is the children can actually experience the vibrations as they're holding the balloon. So as they're spinning the balloon, they'll feel the vibrations that are created. They'll also get a sense of the spinning nut inside creating those vibrations. And immediately they'll start to hear. But as the speed of the nut changes, the sound that's produced changes too. And also demonstrate that the sounds are coming from a vibration because we can take a similar object, in this case a penny, and do the same thing. So the penny goes inside the balloon, to the bottom. Inflate the balloon, tie it off. Now we're going to spin it in exactly the same way. Once the penny's spinning, there's no sound being created in the same way. You might just be able to hear a little hiss. But without those vibrations caused by the edges of the hex nut, you don't get a sound. Okay, next one. 
this video will save your life if you would ever be in a situation like this. You have to cross a bridge and you don't know if a train is coming on us. So what do you do? First of all, I'm not a biologist, but I'm pretty sure that your ears aren't on your hands. But you can actually hear the train coming from very far away if you put your ears on the tracks. It do works and it is extremely effective. But do you know why? Take a second to wonder. So what is happening? Sound is actually just a pressure wave, a disturbance that's kind of pushing to its neighboring atoms to propagate this disturbance wave. As the train is touching the tracks, it's sending a pressure wave down the rail. Now here is why most get it wrong. Sound travels faster than solids, slower in liquid and slowest in gas. This is because solids is much more dense. There are many more molecules in solids. There is less molecules in liquids and there's even fewer molecules in gases. We can represent a sound wave propagating with dominoes. Because the molecules slash dominoes are very close together, they can collide quickly and therefore the wave travels faster. For example, in air, the pressure wave is 343 meters per second. That's the speed of sound. But in water, it's actually 1,482 meters per second. And in steel, it's almost 6,000 meters per second. So in our setup, the sound wave would arrive much sooner in the tracks than in the air, because a pressure wave in steel moves 17 times faster than air. Okay, then you can pause the video if you need more time. I think it's the next one. Let's talk about acoustics, which is basically how sound works in rooms. It may seem complicated, so let's make it simpler. Most rooms have flat walls and flat ceilings, and sound bounces off of these. So how does that affect the sound? I'll use these two Nerf guns to demonstrate. I've got this one aimed, so this disc goes directly to the ear. That represents direct sound. I've got this one aimed, so that disc bounces off the wall, and it represents reflected sound. I'll shoot them both at the same time. Reflected sound arrives at our ears later than direct sound, even though it started out at the same time, because it's traveling farther. And this wall is only one flat surface. There are at least six in the average room, and that's a lot of reflected sound. But why is reflected sound bad? I'll demonstrate using these two identical patterns. The blue pattern represents direct sound waves, and the red pattern represents reflected sound waves. They start out together, but when I move the red one backwards, like a delayed sound reflection, it creates destructive interference patterns, which changes the original sound wave. Now let's use the first of our two acoustical tools, an absorber, to reduce the strength of sound bounces. To a sound wave, an absorber looks a little like a hole in the wall, so some of the energy doesn't come back. An absorber works by reducing the strength of reflected sound that would otherwise cause more destructive interference. But if we use only absorbers in a room, it makes it sound dull and unnatural. Historically, humans don't like overly absorbent rooms. So, Let's use the second of our two acoustical tools, the curved surface diffuser. It also reduces the strength of sound bounces. A diffuser works by scattering the sound reflections in different directions, smoothing out destructive interferences throughout the room. Room acoustics are greatly improved using a combination of absorption and diffusion. Okay, so if you need to, you can rewind the videos to go back and kind of watch some of them again. But hopefully you're able to answer all these questions that we had on page one as we walked through those videos, looking at the different properties of sound uh, demonstrated in those videos. So let's go through these questions, right? So the first one, rice and speaker. So what happens to the rice when the music is being played? So hopefully you notice that it starts moving, right? It starts jumping, it starts vibrating, right? And this actually helps to demonstrate the idea that a sound wave is actually just a bunch of vibrations, right? It's energy traveling through material in the form of vibrations or what we call waves, right? Waves of vibrations. So as the music moves through the speaker into the rice, it causes the rice to vibrate and move as well. 
And then we saw is how is it different during uh, softer or louder sounds. So we saw during the, on the speaker, when there were louder sounds, they're much faster and closer together, we saw that the, the rice moved a lot more, right? And when there are softer sounds, uh, the rice did, still moved, but maybe just a little bit. Sometimes it just vibrated a little bit, uh, just moved like a tiny, tiny amount, right? So there's more energy in a louder sound wave because there is more vibrations. Stronger vibrations caused by stronger amounts of energy means we have more movements. And so we see the rice moving more as well. So again, a core, a core property of sound waves that we're learning about. Next, we looked at the tuning fork in the water. So what makes the tuning fork make a sound? So if you've never used a tuning fork, you could kind of see a little bit in the video, they're tapping it on the table, right? So vibrations, right? If we hit it against something, right? That energy is going to cause the tuning fork to vibrate, right? It's going to make the metal shake. And when we uh, slowed the video down, right, you could see the metal kind of moving back and forth really, really slowly at the end of the tuning fork. That causes the vibration. That vibration is what causes the sound wave that gives off the specific frequency, the specific sound for that tuning fork. So then in the video, what happens when the water, to the water, when the vibrating fork touched it, right? It moved, it splashes, it goes all around in different directions, it creates ripples. You can even say they were making waves, right? You could see little wave patterns in the water. So that there is this transfer of that energy. So when a sound wave hits something, right, there is an energy transfer, just like the stuff we've learned about in the earlier physics lessons. Energy transfers, we see energy coming in one form and coming out as another form, right? So now we're seeing vibrational energy, right? That sound wave when it hits the water and then causes the water to vibrate as well. So it starts giving the energy to the water molecules. And so then why does this happen? Obviously it's because the vibrations or the vibrational energy in the tuning fork move into the water molecules. So the shaking movement of the metal causes the water molecules to also vibrate uh, because of their, they're physically interacting with each other. Okay, so then in the next video, we saw what can happen if we put a hexagonal nut, basically a six-sided kind of a screw nut, into a balloon and we kind of spin it around, right? So what causes the sound made by the balloon? It's that nut, right? So as the hexagonal nut is spinning around on the inside of the balloon, it's going to vibrate, right? And so the vibrations of that hexagonal nut is going to create a sound wave and we can hear it inside of the balloon. So how do we know that sound is coming from the balloon, right? It's because we are capable of hearing it outside of the balloon. And so in the video, the video camera is a good distance away from that balloon, but you can still hear the sound wave in the balloon traveling through the air of the balloon, traveling through the rubber of the balloon, right, the sides of the balloon, then traveling through the air around the woman up into the video camera as well. So sound waves are capable of traveling through solids, liquids, and gases. They could travel through the air, right, that we saw in the balloon. It travels through the solid material that makes up the wall of the balloon. And it also we saw traveling through the liquid, right, when we had the tuning fork touching the water. So sound waves, because they're vibrations, can travel through material that is made up of particles. So uh, anything that is a solid, a liquid, or a gas can transmit sound waves. They can travel through that material. And so the whole reason why we're able to hear the sound wave that was inside the balloon is because the sound wave is capable of moving through the material so that we can hear it outside of the balloon, right? And so this is what would happen if we wanted to map this out in terms of what materials was it going through. It started in the gas form. It started as the sound wave inside of the balloon and the air in the balloon, traveled through solid material, which would be the rubber wall of the, the balloon. And then it then traveled through the air or the gas, right? The air in the room around the woman and around the video camera that allowed us to record and hear that sound wave. Okay. So hopefully these first sets, uh, this first set wasn't too difficult, right? So you can pause the video if you need more time. Uh, and now we're gonna move on to the next set of questions for the other videos. Okay, so the next we had sound through different materials, right? And so other uh, order the states of matter that solid liquids and gases as the sound moves from fastest to slowest. And as you saw in the video represented by the dominoes was a really good indicator, was that the solids are the fastest, then liquids and then gas. And you might think, oh, that's the opposite of what you would imagine. You'd think that because there's less molecules in the air, that sound waves could travel through the air faster, just like you can run through the air, you can run and, you know, when you're, you know, around air uh, faster than you can run through water, 
uh, faster than you can run through a solid. You can't really run through walls, right? Uh, because all the different particles are getting in the way that's slowing you down. But if we're talking about a sound wave, sound waves travel by the particles themselves. They move from particle to particle to particle. So if you have more particles closer together, the sound wave can actually move faster through that material. And so sound waves travel much faster through solids than they do through liquids, than they do through gas. And this is actually one of the reasons why you've probably seen those signs at aquariums or people who have fish tanks that say, don't, don't tap on the glass, right? You shouldn't tap on the glass at an aquarium or at someone's fish tank. Because if you hear it as very, very light tapping, because it's traveling slower through the air from your finger to your ears, right? And traveling through the air. So that sound wave doesn't sound very strong to you because it's slowly moving through the air. However, if you're tapping on the glass, that sound wave travels through the glass into the water of the fish tank. And so in liquids, right, it travels very, very quickly. And so it is actually a much louder sound wave in the water than in you are hearing with your ears. So you might think it doesn't sound like very large, loud tapping, but it actually is extremely loud to the fish and other animals inside the aquarium. That's why you shouldn't do it. It's not good for their hearing. If you ever want to uh, see a visualization of this, uh, if you ever watch the movie Finding Nemo, they do a very good representation of this when um, Darla, who is the, the niece of the dentist in that movie, goes over and taps on his fish tank. And they show you what it sounds like on the inside to the fish that are inside that fish tank. Okay, so don't tap on fish tanks. It's not good uh, for the animals inside. And there is a real physical reason for this. Okay, and so then why does, oh yeah, so why does it move faster? It's because of the material being closer together, right? If we're sending vibrations, that's what a sound wave is, is a, vib a vibration. If it's moving through particles, right, the closer those particles are together, the closer together they are, the faster the, the sound wave can pa pass from one particle to the next. And so the sound wave can physically move faster. Okay, and in the last video we saw the idea of reflection of sound, right? When sound hits something, it reflects off of an object, right? So reflected sound is this idea of sound waves bouncing off of a surface, right? So we've learned about this idea of energy transfers, right? So when sound waves hit something, there's a small little tiny energy transfer. Some of that energy gets changed into heat, right? But a lot of that energy is just going to get changed into sound wave and to stay as a sound wave, but it's going to change direction. It's going to bounce in a different way around the room, right? And so they showed you in that demonstration, it, just with one surface, how easy it is for sound waves to bounce off in different directions and cause a lot of problems where they start bumping into each other. It starts to make the sound not very clear, makes it kind of difficult to understand, right? And so all this extra reflected sound can really uh, make it harder to understand or to hear something very clear. Clearly, right? And so the next question says, how does the sound in the room different when we use the absorbers and diffusers, right? And so if you guys have had music lessons, you had music class, you would have seen things like absorbers and diffusers in the music rooms. So we're using these special devices that help reduce the amount of reflected sound or stop the reflected sound from building up in one direction so that it can make it so that the sound isn't having an echoey effect, right? So that has a very clear and crisp sound like we saw with the video with him clapping the wood slats together, right? And so without them, there was a little bit of an echo, right? It didn't really sound super clear where with the uh, absorbers and diffusers when they are present, the sound uh, is much quicker, it does not reflect, and has a more sharper sound to it. So when we're recording someone's voice, or recording music, something that's important that we want it to sound very crisp and clear, right, and, and not have a kind of an echoey effect, uh, then we use this type of technology to make the sound waves uh, of come off that way whenever we're recording things. Okay, so if you, again, if you need more time, you can pause this and you get this information down. Uh, but then let's move on and let's look at uh, some more visual representations of what it is that we're talking about with properties of a sound wave. Okay. Oh, sorry. And so we had one more thing. Sorry. There is a physical demo that goes along with your packet as well. And so you, could st you can still do this if you wish, right? If you want to pause the video and try this out. So the first physical demo is this idea of material traveling through sounds being a louder, right? And so you can try this. If you have a desk at home, right? So what you do is just tap your desk, right, with your knuckle. Uh, you know, or like a pen or something, uh, and then put your ear on the desk and tap in that same place in the same way. And which one actually sounds louder to you? 
And really what should happen is that the, when you put your ear onto the desk, it should sound louder. Because again, if we're talking about the idea of sound waves traveling through solids faster than they do liquids, than they do the air, the sound wave traveling through the air when you're, you're standing up and you're just tapping your desk, right? It's gonna move slower. So you're gonna hear the energy, the amount of energy that's in the sound wave is a little bit less. So that means it's gonna be a little bit quieter because that's, there's not so much energy in it. But if you are having your ear on the desk, the sound wave travels through the wood or metal or whatever your material is made out of, but travels through that solid material faster, right? And so there's more energy when that sound wave hits your ear and so it will sound louder uh, when you hear it through the, through the wood or whatever solid material you have. I'm oh, sorry, and then the second physical demo that you can try, again, pause the video if you wanna give this a shot, is just take a piece of paper uh, and then roll it up into this kind of cone shape so that the opened cone end uh, is near your ear going into your, like, the, the hole of your ear, right? Uh, and so what you can do is kind of go around and you can listen to things either with this cone or without this cone. And actually you can try it right now. So like, I'll just kind of talk really quiet, right? You can hear it just, just a little bit maybe through your iPad or your computer. And then if you use the cone, right? How does it sound a little bit louder, right? Can you hear it a little bit better through the cone? Okay, so if you try that out, this makes sense. Why it would be easier to hear it when you're using the cone is because the cone is helping to reflect the sound towards your ear. So it's kind of bouncing around the inside of the cone and then eventually it makes it to the very bottom of the cone where your ear is. And so it's kind of funneling the sound waves towards your ear, which should make it easier to hear them, right? So this is actually a really famous device used long before we had hearing aids. Now we have computer hearing aids that you can kind of, <coughs> sorry, that you can put in your, your ear that kind of helps do this for you. But before we had these little computer-based hearing aids, people, if they lost their hearing, they would use kind of a large metal cone that they would carry around with them. And they would hold it to their ear uh, when they would ask someone to speak to them so that the sound wave would go through the cone uh, right into their ear. And so it would sound louder to them. And so it would be easier for them to hear it. Okay, so again, if you need more time, uh, you can pause this video and, um, and write the stuff down. Uh, but if not, so let's go in and think about some ways we can diagram these properties of sounds. Okay, so here's Drew from Drew's Drums. All right, he thinks you guys have done a fantastic job answering all those questions, right? Uh, he needs us to look at the competition questions specifically that we started off with, and we're going to get to those in just a second, right? So on page two, maybe you can write down some of the ideas that we've learned about to complete the questions uh, for Drew's competition, right? So these questions here. So when you pause the video and give these a shot and think about what we just learned about, uh, how do they apply to these questions? Okay, so you did this, right? You answered all these questions so that we can get uh, some free drums for our, our uh, Zane shearing, right? Okay, so first off, what starts a sound, right? So that's gonna be vibrations, right? Any type of vibration is the source of a sound wave. Then what makes some sounds loud and some sounds soft? That would be the amount of energy slash the size of the vibrations. So there's more energy, there's more vibrations of the molecules, which means it's a louder sound. If there's less energy, there would be less vibrations, so it would be a softer sound. Uh, how does sound travel, right? So sound travels in waves through particles, right? Through materials, through the atoms of material, right? It travels through the air, it travels through liquids, it travels through solids by vibrating those particles in the form of a wave, right? So uh, we'll look at some waves of visualization, visualizations in just a little bit. Okay, uh, so sound waves uh, in what direction? So sound always travels in all directions, right? As you guys can understand this idea, right? If someone's watching TV in another room, right? That sound wave isn't going directly from the TV to the person's ears. The sound waves from the TV are going in all directions around that room. And then they'll start to move out of that room and go through other rooms, right? And so you can hear somebody else watching television. You can hear somebody else having a conversation, even if you're not right next to them, because the waves are going in all directions, all right, uh, from that source. Even if somebody's not looking at you, if they're talking and they're facing the opposite direction of you, you can still hear them because their sound waves will eventually bounce around the room and eventually get to your ears as they talk. Okay, and then sound travels. It travels through our solids, our liquids, and our gases. And why is it that they can do this? Is because all three of these things have particles. And so again, if a sound wave 
is vibrations of particles. We have to have particles in order for those vibrations to exist. So as long as we have particles, and solids have particles, and liquids have particles, and gases have particles, then a sound wave can pass through them by vibrating those particles. And the last one, what happens when a sound hits a surface? Remember that is reflection, right? The sound wave will bounce off of the object and go in a different direction uh, as it hits that object. So that is called reflected sound or a reflection. Okay, so good job answering these questions, learning a lot from the videos and the stuff we've been discussing. Uh, you can pause this again if you need a little bit more time to write down these answers. Uh, but now that we've successfully explained these concepts to Drew, we can get our free drums. Uh, and we're also going to learn a little bit more about these concepts and do a little bit of diagramming to help you make sure you understand what's going on with our sound waves. Okay, so moving on. Right, remember that all sound waves start off as vibrations. So for example, our busker, if he's going to be playing the drums, him hitting his hands against the drum, that's going to cause the drum to vibrate. And so then the vibrations inside of the drum are going to pass through the body of the drum, creating a big sound wave, kind of collecting together to make a large kind of sound wave, which would be the bonk sound of the drum, right? And so as you vibrate the drum, right, as you hit it harder or you hit it softer, you get stronger sound waves and you get weaker sound waves, depending on how much energy goes into the drum, right? So all sound waves are vibrations, right? They're just vibrations of materials, of the particles that are in solids, liquids, and gases. That's what a sound wave is. All right, in terms of the variation of size, right, the bigger the sound wave, the louder it's going to be. So if I hit the drum really, really hard, I'm putting a lot more energy into the drum. So more energy means more vibrations, stronger, larger vibrations, which means uh, a louder sound, a louder sound wave. If it was less energy, uh, it'd be less vibrations, and it would be softer. Okay. We also saw that sound can travel in all directions from the source. We saw with our vibrating, um, uh, this, the tuning fork and the water, the vibrations of the water went in all directions around it, right? So that's also a good visualization. So sound waves are always in all directions from the source of the sound, right? And then it's always going to be an energy transfer, right? So energy is always transferring from one particle to the next. And so this is what a sound wave would actually look like. So this, is our person drumming on one side of the room, and those are your ears on the other side of the room. So it's gonna cause these particles to vibrate, and then it's gonna pass on to the next ones, which will then cause these ones to vibrate, which will then cause these ones to vibrate, and then these ones, and then these ones. And so all the particles are either vibrating or not vibrating, depending on whether or not the wave has passed through those particles or not. So we hit the drum, the air particles next to it will vibrate, and then the particles next to those particles will vibrate, and then the particles next to those particles are going to vibrate. And so when they're vibrating, right, the particles are going to, going to squish together, and then as the wave passes through them, it's going to cause them to vibrate and start to move apart from each other, start to spread apart. So as we go from our source of sound towards our ear, we are seeing basically an energy transfer. And so we're seeing waves of vibrations moving through these particles, eventually going to hit your ears, right? So the vibrating of these air particles and the particles next to them and the particles next to that one and the particles next to that one, eventually vibrating the particles in your ear. And then in another unit, we'll talk about what actually happens in your ear so that your brain can hear it. But again, it's just vibrating particles in a wave form, right? And so one vibrates the next one, which vibrates the next one, which vibrates the next one, uh, kind of like dominoes falling, right? is how a sound wave actually functions. Okay, so uh, I wanna make sure that you understand the visualization of a sound wave. So on page three, you can pause the video if you need to, but there's some space. And I just want you to draw a, a simple diagram like this to kind of represent these sound waves, right? These particles vibrating between our source of sound, which is our drum, and then where the sound is going to end up when we hear it, which is our ears. Okay, so pause this if you need more time. Okay, all right, so then we think about vibrations though. Vibrations are not in a single direction. So the energy transfer is in one direction, right? It's moving outwards from the source. That's why when we think about a sound wave, all directions from the source, everything's always going in a, the, in, in, away from the drum, right? So it's always moving in a circular way away from the drum. So in all directions around the drum, the sound wave is traveling. However, the vibrations of particles are always going to be in multiple directions because vibrations means we're both moving forward and backwards. 
So if we really think about the vibrations of the sound wave, the sound vibrations of the particles when they have the sound wave, is that they're moving back and forth next to each other, right? That's what a vibration is. So what I want you to do on page three is to your diagram, underneath the particles, I want you to add these um, uh, vibration arrows to represent that the vibrations are going in multiple directions, right? Uh, because again, it's what a vibration is, it's kind of going back and forth uh, as it vibrates in one direction to the other. However, because sound waves, the vibration and the energy can be both going in the same direction, we call sound waves longitudinal waves. And that's actually a core vocabulary word. So you want to make sure you kind of star this in your packet or underline it or highlight it, right? So longitudinal waves is because the sound wave, the energy, is moving also in the same direction as the vibration. So the vibrations are going in multiple directions, but some of those vibrations are ultimately in the same direction as our energy transfer. So that means that the sound wave, the vibration, and the energy, they all can be moving the same direction. And eventually, when all of these things collide and they all end up hitting your ear, that's where you hear the sound wave. You hear it because the energy being transferred through the particles, the particles are going to vibrate, and the vibration of the particles is what's moving the sound as a wave eventually to your ears. Right? So particles do not travel from one end to the other of the wave. They move, they vibrate, and then pass that energy on to the next part. So that vibration and that energy going from particle to particle to particle in the same direction, that's what we're seeing when we have a longitudinal wave. And so we are going to do uh, some visualizations of longitudinal waves uh, with some activities later on using some uh, internet simulators, OK? Uh, but for now, you can kind of just add in these arrows to kind of represent this uh, diagram of what a sound wave actually looks like as it moves through these particles. OK, so pause the video if you need more time uh, to add this on to page three. OK, you did it. All right, and so remember, as long as there are particles present, sound waves can travel through that material. So here, we see people out in a field. There are sound waves traveling through the gases, you know, like the air around them, because there are particles around them. If they are underwater, right, the sound wave would still travel through the liquid, and it actually would travel faster than it travels through the air, right? But it would still be able to travel because there are particles in the water, right? Remember, water is made up of water. It's made up of H2O, right? Even if they were in solid material, let's say we froze that into an ice block and somehow they were still able to play sound wave frozen in ice, they would still be able to, to transmit that sound wave through the solid material, right? Because as long as it has particles, sound waves can travel through it. So it can travel through gas, it can travel through liquid, it can travel through a solid. And in fact, because the particles are so much closer together as a solid, it would travel much faster and actually maybe come off as a louder sound when it's in the solid form versus a liquid or a gas. Okay, so again, this is trying to reiterate this, what we were just learning about our properties of sound today. However, let's imagine that they were on the moon, right? On the moon, there would not be any sound waves because space is a vacuum. And so vacuum is another key vocabulary word that you wanna make sure you know for this unit. So a vacuum means it is a space that has no particles, right? So there are no particles present whatsoever. And so sound waves cannot travel through space because there's no particles to vibrate. And if there's no particles to vibrate, that means the sound wave cannot travel anywhere. And so the sound wave just doesn't exist. Energy can't travel in the sound form without particles to vibrate. So if you were on the moon and you were playing the guitar like this, there's no particles around, so you can't hear the guitar. You can't, if you're standing next to the person playing the guitar, you couldn't hear it. If you were playing the guitar, you couldn't hear it. If you were playing the guitar, you could feel it vibrating, right? You could strum the strings and you could feel the vibrations of the guitar from the strings vibrating, but you would not be able to hear anything at all because there's no way for that energy to become a sound wave if there is uh, no particles around. So again, anywhere that is a vacuum, there are no particles, so there is no vibrations, there are no movements of sound. And so you guys have probably heard of things like soundproof booths, right, or soundproof rooms, rooms where no sound can get in and no sound can get out. And that's how those rooms work. And so what you have is you have an outer layer of the room and then you have an inner layer of the room. And then in the space between those two layers, we create a vacuum, we completely remove all of the particles from the in between the two spaces. So that means that if you are tapping on the outside of that room, 
right? The vibrations would travel all around the outside barrier, but they couldn't pass through the middle part because there are no gases, there's no particles on the inside. So that means the very middle of our box is completely free from those vibrations. And so there's no sound on the inside of that box. Same thing on the inside. If you're on the inside, you could be banging on the, on the side of the wall, but there's no way for that vibration on the wall to then pass through that little gap uh, because there's a vacuum between the two parts of the wall. And so no sound waves can get out of the room. Okay, so that's how a soundproof room actually works. All right, so hopefully this was pretty clear, right? And then our last diagram that we're gonna add into our notes is this concept of what happens when we reflect sound, right? So here you also have some space on page three where you can add this in. So you've got a drum producing our sound wave and again, add in our little dots to represent the sound wave moving through them. And as it hits the wall, there is a little energy transfer. And so then the sound bounces off the wall, eventually getting to a person's ear. And so that is called our reflected sound. So sound waves, like lots of things we'll be learning about, are capable of doing reflection. And so an interesting thing is that reflected sound is called an echo. Now you're probably thinking an echo is uh, if you're, you know, if something's far enough away, like if you're in a canyon or you're near some mountains, if you yell really, really loud, that sound wave will travel from you, hit those mountains, and then reflect back at you. And so then you hear your own voice uh, a few seconds later, right? You hear, wah, and then a few seconds later you hear, wah, you hear your own reflected sound. And we call that an echo, right? But technically, all sound that is reflected is an echo. The only difference between what I just described and what's happening right now inside of your room, right, where you're hearing my voice come out of your computer and it's reflecting all around your room and you're hearing it, is that you're hearing it immediately rather than hearing it later on, uh, like a, a, as you're imagining an echo to be, as something that happens uh, after that sound has been produced, right? But as long as it's reflected, it's technically called an echo. It's just, we think of an echo as a version of that reflection being so slow that the device that it's reflecting off is so far away that we hear the sound completely after we've stopped it, right? But the moment you hear my voice after it's reflected off something, technically you heard reflected sound and you have heard an echo of my voice coming from the computer. Okay, so if you need more time, you can add this in again on your notes. And then we're just gonna do a couple more revision to kind of discuss uh, what we learned uh, for this part, okay? All right, so moving on. So Drew's like, great, agency, you've done a great job. Your questions and your answers, your understanding of the science of sound, spot on, right? So you can have a collection of drums that will help our busker here, right? Zane, he's super happy, right? He's ecstatic. He's gonna have these drums to help, um, um, you know, improve his playing. Uh, but it does need a little bit more variety, right? So we need to get some big drums, we need to get some pots and pans, we need to get things that make lots of different sound waves. So he's starting to think big, right? Let's not just use a few drums, let's try to get as creative as possible. Let's try to increase the amount of drums we have, the amount of things that create these cool sound waves so we can make some really cool music uh, through the vibrations coming from this material, right? So it seems like we're starting off uh, his career pretty well over the, our first section of this unit. Okay, so then let's, review some things we've learned, and then we're gonna practice applying this to some things we see in biology. So here you go, uh, are some practice questions uh, in your packet. So just pause the video and then go through these and fill in the blank, and then unpause it and I'll show you the answers. Okay, so you did it, right? You did the practice questions? Good, so let's fill in the blank here. So sounds start as a vibrations, right? The bigger the vibration, the louder the sound. Sound vibrations travel from their source in all directions, right? This transfers energy, right? When sound hits something, right, there's these energy transfers between these little particles. Vibrating particles make the particle next to them vibrate, right? So one particle vibrates, vibrates the next particle, which vibrates the next particle, just like with the dominoes. One domino knocks down the next one, which knocks down the next one, right? The vibrating particles make up a sound wave. In sound waves, vibrations and energy transfer, our energy transfer, are in the same direction, right? And so the vibrations and energy being able to be in the same direction, so the sound waves are longitudinal waves. So that's where we're getting that vocab, <coughs> longitudinal waves. The fact that energy transfer and the vibrations are happening in the same direction as the wave moves through the material. 
So when a sound wave hits a hard surface, it bounces off the surface. The wave has been reflected, right? And then this makes an echo, right? So all echoes are reflected sound, whether or not you're hearing them immediately or you're hearing them, you know, a few seconds later, like you're imagining a traditional echo to be, all reflected sound can be considered an echo. Okay, so great job, right? So you completed these. All right, so then let's look at a little bit of an, a biological application of the physics, right? Oh, sorry, one more page. Forgot about this one. Okay, so you, you filled this one out as well, right? Just summarizing where stuff can travel through, right? So we can see it traveling through the air because there's particles that can vibrate. Through the water, again, because there's particles that can vibrate. Through the solid, because there's particles that can vibrate. And But if we think about a vacuum, right, there are no particles to vibrate, so there is no sound traveling through a vacuum. Okay? All right, so again, need a little bit more time. You can pause this. But the last thing we're going to do is look at the biological application of some of this physics, right? And so at, at the end of some of the parts of this unit, we're going to take some time to look at our ideas and some new context, right, through a biological way. So we're going to look at these wildlife world uh, sections. We're going to look at the nature of sound in connection to living things. So here we've got some questions that we want you to think about. So these are some things sent in from the readers for this, uh, this kind of news report. And so I want you guys to take some time to think about what would be the best answer to write back to these users about these questions. So on page four, go ahead, answer these questions. Okay, you did it. Right, so then let's think about what each, the answer to each question should be, right? So the first one, talking about the dog's ears, right? So this idea that the dog's ear is going to help that reflected sound connect towards their ear, right? To the ear canal so they can hear. Just like you guys, if you did the rolling up of the paper in order to make the cone, right? You're collecting that sound together in order so you can hear it better. Uh, a dog's ear is shaped the way that it is so that the sound wave will collect into the uh, the ear canal of the dog, and they can direct their ears in different directions in order to better hear something uh, that's around them. Okay, next, think about why there is no sound in space. Again, that's because it is a vacuum. There are no particles to vibrate, so that means that we cannot have sound waves traveling through the vacuum, so we have no sound in space. Next, talk about the elephants. So elephants are capable of communicating over such long distances because their sound waves are going to travel through the ground, right? So as the elephant stamps its foot, right, it's putting energy into the particles on, of the ground, right? That ground, uh, the particles will vibrate, right? And so the sound wave will travel through the ground very, very long distances. And so elephants are actually capable of kind of hearing the sound through their feet, right? So they can pick up these vibrations on the ground and they can communicate with each other this way over very, very long distances, very, very quickly, rather than making a bunch of loud noise by you know, yelling out and trumpeting with their, with their vocal cords, they can do it with their feet through the ground as a different way to communicate. And then the last one, thinking about our crickets, right? The crickets chirping sounds are actually vibrations coming from rubbing their legs together. So the, the um, surface of a cricket's leg their back legs are actually, they're a little bit hollow, which helps them vibrate more. And then they're rigid, right? They got little bumps on them. And so as they rub them together, right, it makes a really, really loud chirping sound wave that can then travel through the air. And they're using it mostly to communicate with other crickets that are in the area. And so those, those sharp, loud vibrations are coming from the rubbing of their feet. So again, vibrations come from uh, this, this vi or sorry, sound waves come from these vibrations of materials, right? So energy going into particles, causing them to vibrate. That's where a sound wave comes from. Okay, so hopefully this was, was pretty clear, adding in this extra bit of information, right? And so if you uh, need more time, right, you can go back and um, uh, rewatch parts of this video. Uh, but if not, then good job. You made it through the, the first lesson in our new units, and we'll see you at next class.